Good morning, Amadou. Good morning. For me, it's good night. It's ah, yes, good night. <laughs> where, where, where are you calling in from? I'm from Brazil. Ah, very good. What time is it over there? Uh, I, actually, I'm in the Philippines right now, and it's uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Oh. All right, we'll go ahead and start with introductions, and then we'll get started with our beginner pronunciation class today. Eveline, could you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from, please? <laughs> Hi, Eve Eveline, could you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Okay, maybe, maybe no audio. Uh, Gabriel... Uh, Anne, could you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from, please? I'm Anna. I'm Anne. I'm from El Salvador, but I'm living in the U.S. right now. Okay. All right. Welcome to our class. Thank you. Amado, can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from, please? Yes, sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Amadeo. I'm from Brazil. South of Brazil, Paraná. All right. Welcome to the class. Thank you. And good morning, Gabriella. Can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from, please? Gabriella? Okay, and how about Eveline? Can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Okay, maybe no audio. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Our class today is, ah, uh, Gabriella, thank you. Uh, sorry you're having a problem with your microphone, uh, but please uh, feel free to send messages on chat or questions on chat and enjoy the class. Welcome to the class. Uh, our class today is uh, pronunciation, and what I'd like to do today is um, I would like to start out by having you tell me sounds or words that you struggle uh, or have a problem with pronouncing, and we'll go through and practice those. I'll give you some tips on how to improve, and uh, uh, if, if the class doesn't have enough examples, then I have some sounds that are common issues we'll work on. <coughs> okay, so does, who's in the class who has a sound that you would like to work on or a word? Anybody? <laughs> okay, let me try. I have some problem with the R, you know? Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to me. Some sounds it's easier, but some words it's hard to pronounce. Yes, um, and oftentimes the R sound gives students problems uh, in words depending on the sound that's immediately before the R or immediately after the R. And so let's start with just the basic R sound. Then I want you to try to Think of some words that you have trouble with, and we'll try. Yeah, that's try the to thing. I, I don't remember any words are causing that. Right okay. No, no problem. No problem. We'll do some examples, and maybe that'll help. Um, the R sound um, uh, is uh, one that the position of your tongue and your mouth is extremely important to be able to make that sound correctly. So. Okay. Let's pretend that this is the roof of your mouth, my hand right here. The tips of my fingers are your teeth, okay? Okay. What you're going to do is you take the tip of your tongue. Now, the tip does not touch the roof of your mouth, no touch. 
but you bring the tip back in your mouth as far back as you can make it go. And as you start to sweep that tongue forward or move that tongue forward, following the shape of the roof of your mouth but not touching, right when the tip of your tongue gets to the very center of the roof of your mouth, then you start to make the sound ruh. Okay. So you bring it all the way back, ruh. 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 Okay. Ruh. Very, all right. Very, very good. Now, what happens as we make the sounds of, uh, of other words, because you do the sound uh, just fine on the single sound <laughs> of R, but as we put it into words, our mouth is in a different position, okay? And so to get that tongue back and get in the right position is what causes the problem. Yeah. Oftentimes what happens, based on the sound just before or just after the R, you don't get your tongue in the right position so the R sound isn't formed properly. So the first thing I tell you is we'll, we'll tr practice a few words. If we can run across a word that's one that gives you problems, that'll help me identify the other sound. But what happens as we do this, um, the important thing is as you're pronouncing words is to just really slow down and focus on all these things we're talking about. Where is your tongue uh, in, in the position of your mouth? Um, and let's take a look. I've got some good examples of practicing R. And I've got some questions on the uh, screen. Jane, and welcome to, to class, Jane. Uh, Jane has uh, given me some words that have R in them for her. Uh, girl. Girl. World. Okay. Ruled. And raw. Okay. So those are some sounds uh, uh, that Jane struggles with or has, has, uh, would like to have pronounced. So let's talk about some other R sound words uh, that we can practice. So what I'd like to you do, and any of you that want to practice this out loud, feel free to. Uh, the first word is right. 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 Rain. 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 Room. 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 Uh, red. 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 Very good. River. 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 Okay. Very good. Remember. 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 Ah, very good, class. Sorry. 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 Okay. Sorry. Arrive. 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 Parent. 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 Brown. 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 Drink. 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 Problem. 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 <laughs> That's the problem. P and R. <laughs> All right. All right. I, I, I um, knew we would eventually hit on it. <laughs> Very good. All right. So let's uh, remember that. We'll go through and practice and see if we find any others, okay? All right. Street. 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 Green. 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 Tree. 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 Friend. 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 Very, very good. All right. So now, Emma, do you notice the PR? Did you notice any other sounds? I, I noticed when I close my mouth before or after the R. I think that's the problem. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, so maybe let's try this one. Crack. What? Crack. Crack. All right. You sounded good on that one. So, so. Uh, all right. Um, all right. All right. Very good. Um, 
the sounds uh, and the best advice I can give you is practice that R sound and pay very close attention to your tongue. In the, in the book, and I use a book for pronunciation called Focus on Pronunciation. Uh, I'll give all of you the name of that book. It's an excellent book. Okay. Focus on Pronunciation. It's by Linda Lane. And it is a Longman publication. Okay. So what I want you to do as you uh, practice that sound be very conscious of your tongue. And in the book, it says to scoot the base of your tongue, the, meaning the very back part of your tongue, back into your throat as far as you can when you're making the R sound. Well, I can't physically make my tongue do that. But when we take the tip of our tongue and bend it back as far as we can, it forces the base of your tongue to go back. So that's the purpose of taking the tongue all the way back as far as you can but then as you start to move the tongue forward, we don't make the R sound till the tongue gets to the peak or the middle. And then it's ruh, ruh. So uh, for you that are having trouble with the PR, okay, um, problem. Problem. Pro problem. 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 Priority. 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 Oh, very good. Very good. Promise. 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 Now, for some people that have uh, problems with the R sound, they also have problems uh, with uh, uh, the L sound. So. Uh, Amadou, how do you how do you do on the L sound? Are you okay? Uh, I think I'm okay, but we can try some words to see. Okay. Let's let's try some words. Uh, light. 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 Okay. Police. 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 <laughs> Please. 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 Look. 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 Letter. 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 Lemon. 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 Very good. Late. 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 Television. 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 She said bye. Family. 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 Okay. Color. 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 All right. Ceiling. 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 Clock. 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 Very, very good. All right. Place. 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 All right. Very good. Now let's try a little exercise. And what we're going to do is I'm going to give you two words. And the first word will be starting with R. The second word is the same ending sound, but start with L. Road, <laughs> load. It's a trick. Road, load. Road, load. Road, load. Road, road. Road, road. Wrong, long. Wrong, long. Wrong, long. Wrong, long. Fry, fly. Fry fly. I fly. Fry right. fly. Right, Correct. Collect. Correct. Correct. Collect. Collect. Correct. Uh, collect. Correct. Collect. Okay. So let's back up before you do this next one. Let's back up on correct and collect. The sounds mm -hmm. are in the middle of the word, and it makes it a little bit more difficult. Let's all do that one again. Correct. Collect. Correct. Correct. Collect. Correct. Collect. Collect. All right. Very, very Collect. good. All right. Arrive alive. Arrive alive. Arrive alive. Arrive alive. alive. Pray, play. Pray, play. Pray, play. All right. Now, this next one is one that challenges a lot of people. Pirate, pilot. 
Pirate pilot. Pirate pilot. Very good, class. Right light. Right light. Right light. 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 Now, one of the things that you're going to find in practicing pronunciation, and Armadou experienced this earlier, when he just is pronouncing the R sound, he has no problem. But when he puts it with certain sounds, it can be a, a problem for him. The other thing is, when we begin to use the sound in sentences, our pattern of speech, our speed of our speech, those things sometimes also cause problems. So let's try a couple sentences. The first sentence I want to do, Larry is collecting the papers. Larry, Larry is collecting, is collecting papers. the papers. Now, Larry is correcting the papers. Larry, Larry, Larry is, is correcting, correcting the papers. The papers. The children are playing. The children, the children are, are playing. Children are playing. Children are playing. The children are praying. The children are praying. The children are praying. Those are fries. Those are fries. Those are flies. Those are flies. Roland is a pirate. Roland is a pirate. Roland is a pilot. Roland is a pilot. Excuse me, class. Yeah, very, very good. You did. From what I can hear, and with many of you saying it, I can still hear a lot of the individuals. Some of you blend a little bit, but uh, uh, sounds like everybody had a pretty good uh, pronunciation on most of those sounds. The secret between the R and the L is all in the position of your mouth and your tongue. Remember. On the R sound, if this is the roof of your mouth, the tongue is being bent back as far as you can, and then you come forward, ruh, ruh. The L sound, again, this is the roof of your mouth. The fit tips of your fingers are your t teeth. Right behind your teeth, there's a bump on the inside of your mouth. On the L sound, the tongue is touching, and it touches right there at that bump. And you touch it right there on that bump, and then when you bring it down, okay, when you bring it down, it's la, la. La. So on the R sound, the tongue does not touch the tip of the roof of the mouth, and the tongue goes back as far as you can get it. On the L sound, the tongue is touching, and it's touching at the front of the mouth, on the bump just behind your, your uh, teeth. So knowing those uh, can help you uh, improve uh, how your pronunciation is. The couple tips I want to give you as you practice your pronunciation. The first one's very hard for most people. Practice the trouble sound every day for five to ten minutes until you have not only the ability to make the sound uh, perfect, but also until you can use that sound in conversation and not revert back to the wrong way you used to say it. For most people, this will take three to four weeks of practicing every day for five to ten minutes. Now the second thing is record yourself and listen. Okay, That way you can hear when you're making improvement or when you still need to, to adjust how you're saying it. So it's very important recording yourself. The next thing is practice in front of a mirror. Okay, um, 
That way you can see the position of your mouth. You might think that you have it correct, but when you look at it in the mirror, it's not. So this will help you as well. So record yourself, practice in front of the mirror, two, uh, three to four weeks on the same sound, uh, but again, only you know maybe five, uh, five minutes uh, every day. You can practice your pronunciation in a lot of areas that you're doing your daily routine. If you're driving in your car, you can practice your pronunciation. Uh, if you are uh, uh, taking a shower, yeah, yeah, taking a shower. Yeah, there you go. Uh, just be careful not to get your tape recorder in the shower. Uh, but, <laughs> but you can practice in a lot of different places and a lot of different things that you can do uh, because the, 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 the concept is being just you have to be able to focus on the sound now in one of our other classes we t I, I uh, made the comment that you know you can practice if you take a train into the city for work every day or a bus you can practice on the train or bus I'll just give you one caution people will probably look at you and think that person's <laughs> crazy <laughs> they're over there mumbling to themselves but practice is the key and practicing frequency very important because what happens you're already making the sound you're already using English and if you begin to say the wrong sound or say the sound wrong then what happens is that becomes the habit of how you say it well in order to break a habit we have to change that habit consecutively uh, most experts say 30 days before we form the new habit and so that's part of what's behind this in pronunciation. What I've seen a lot of students do, they'll practice the sound, they'll get it where they're pretty good, and as soon as they start using it in conversation, they go back to saying it incorrectly. So it's very important to practice it until you use it in conversation and you don't revert back or go back to the old way you used to say it. Very good. Um, and uh, let me go back. Jane had some words up there uh, that I want to go back and talk about. We talked about at the beginning. Uh, let me pull those up in the chat. Very active chat today. Good to see. All right. Jane said, ah, here we go. Girl, world, ruled, and raw. And Jane, it sounds like based on the selection of words you gave me, it's the combination of the R and the L sound. And think about what we talked about with where the tongue goes. That's probably why. Your tongue is in the position of the R sound and you've got your tongue all the way to the back and then the very next sound your tongue's got to be at the front and, and touching and coming down. So that's probably what that is. I would recommend practicing those sounds uh, uh, as we've just described for 30 days uh, and uh, record yourself listen for your improvement uh, watch yourself in the mirror when you can and uh, uh, just look for other words that would have those similar structure so the R and the L um, close together uh, and and try to continue to practice those like maybe twirl okay uh, so look for words that have that R and L in practice teacher can can you repeat that word yeah word. twirl twirl twirl, twirl. so if I use that in a sentence I would say um, he twirled his partner around. Okay. All right. Very good exercise. And and uh, uh, Amadou, uh, the R and the L sound are very commonly uh, challenge sounds for a lot of students. Some of right. it depends on your native language. Uh, what sounds are in your native language uh, that are close to that, or maybe there are no sounds close, and that's why the problem. Very okay. good. All right. 
Any others from the class? How about another sound? I have a problem with word N and E D or D. Ah, okay. E D. So we're talking about past tense. You know, that's an excellent question because what most people don't realize, there's three different ways to pronounce it. The first one is just T. The second one is just D. And the last one is Id. Okay? And there are rules on which we use. So let me get the book out. Let me share with you those rules and let's practice a few. <clears throat> All right. And this can be an entire lesson on its own, but we're going to do it pretty quick. Uh, but uh, I'll give you enough information that you can uh, uh, start to practice this and get better uh, on your own. The first rule is All right, so if the verb ends in the T or D sound, we pronounce id. Now, very important, not the spelling, the sound. And we'll get into some examples of where the spelling and the sound are different, okay? So where, when the word ends in the T or the D sound, we always pronounce it id, okay? So, for example, painted. Landed. Landed. All right. Very, very good. The next one, and we're going to do some more examples. I'll give you the few rules first, okay? Um, the next one, if the word ends All right, so ending in the sounds P, K, F, S, and C, H, we, we say T, okay? So we don't say id and we don't say D. We say T. For example, okay, this word is actually pronounced talked. 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 Very Talked. good. This word is actually pronounced watched. Watched. Very good. This word stopped. 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 Very good. <clears throat> and this one kissed. Kiss. Kiss. And these are a distinctive T sound, so not a D sound and certainly not an ID sound, the ED sound. And so many people um, have problems with this and it's because they don't know the rules uh, that I'm sharing with you. And so there's three rules uh, for the past tense verb sounds. Let's look at the third one. So we've studied two. The first one is when you pronounce it id. Very simple. The word ends in a T or D sound. We say id. If it ends in any of these sounds, P, K, F, S, uh, and CH, uh, then uh, we say T, T. The next sound is ending in, and this one's a little bit longer,
All right. If it ends in B, G, V, Z, M, N, R, L, or a vowel, we say D. Duh. Okay. So let's look at a couple of those. Okay. Um, Now keep in mind the spelling is always ED or usually ED with some of the other rules out there. But uh, answered. answered, 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 and and what we what we don't answered. say is we we don't say answered. We just say answered. 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 Very good. The next one is closed. 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 Very good. All right. Very very good. The next one is, and this is one I want to talk about. I want you to think about this. We said when it ends in a vowel sound, right? So enjoyed. Enjoyed. So enjoyed. enjoyed. Very good. And enjoyed. it's because it ends in a vowel sound, okay? Opened. Open. Open. Opened. All right. Very good. Opened. Very good. Now I'm going to give you some words, and I want you to tell me what you would, how you would pronounce the past tense. How do you pronounce the past tense of decide? Decide. 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 D sound. D sound. Yep, it's the D sound. Thank you very much, because this is a great example of when we don't go by spelling. The spelling is at the end is a vowel, but the vowel is silent. So the sound at the end is the D sound. So we pronounce it just like I, I wrote it up here, decided. 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 Okay. What about dance? Dance. 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 Is it the E, D, T, or D sound? D. D sound. D. D, D sound. Okay. Let's take a look. What's the last sound in the word dance? Vowel. Dance and a consonant. Yeah. Consonant T. What? But what is the what is the sound that you hear last in dance? What's the S. last sound? Uh, S. So T what's the rule? T, T sound. Yeah. T sound. Uh, yes. T. Dance. Um, dance. Okay. Very good. Now there's another great example, and it goes by sound, not not uh, spelling. Very good. Very good. You guys are doing fine. How about stay? Stay. 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 Yep. D sound. Stayed. Okay. Stay. How about laugh? Laugh. Laugh. T. Laugh. T. T sound. Laugh. P. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Uh, because what's the final sound in laugh? F. 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 Yeah, but it's spelled G H, but it's pronounced F, so it's the T sound. Good job. Good job. Let's look at a couple others that are kind of tricky. Push. 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 D. Push. D. Push. Very good. Yeah. Yep. Very good. So when you have the SH, and I apologize, I'm looking back at the chat. I left that out. Uh, SH uh, is the D sound. Yep. Yep. I didn't put it in your rule. Sorry, guys. Uh, very good. Um, what about this word? Live. D? Live. 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 D and it's live D. and live. and live. and someone just said livid and that's the number one way that I hear these mistakes made. We add the id sound on most of them, and so uh, that's exactly what most of us do as we're learning this. So it it ends in the v sound live. Uh, so when we're saying the past tense, it's lived, just a d sound. Very very good. Let's look Gary, at one more. Yes. Can I ask you something? Yes. Uh, I, I don't understand in posh uh, because uh, the last sound is S H. S. Yes. 
why it's not T sound because uh, it, it ends in uh, SH sound. Hush. Uh, let me go back and look. Did I say that one wrong? Ah, oh, you know what? I apologize. I, I, t I typed that one wrong. It is the T sound. Yeah. Pushed. Oh, yeah. yeah, good question. Was that AMP that said that? Yes. No. Ah, thank you, AMP, for keep, keeping me in the straight and narrow here. Very good. Thank you. Yes, it, you're right. I typed it wrong. It is T. Pushed. Uh, the SH sound is always T. Uh, very, very good catch. Thank you. Very good. All right, and um, back to the uh, student asset. I think it was Anne. Anne, does that help you? Yes. Okay. I have right. I have one more question. Yes. I have two words I always have trouble to pronounce. One is car, C A R, and the other one is car, like C A R D. Ah. And I tried to pronounce right, but when people he people hear the same, they don't Sorry. understand the. Difference. All right, very good. And it's a very common thing with a lot of words uh, that have only the ending sound uh, that uh, differentiates the words. So when we say car and card, the only difference is the D sound at the end. Mm -hmm. And so I find this to be the case with a lot of people on this word, these two words also, can and can't. And so notice when I pronounce it, you really, what happens is um, when we get to the end of the word, we don't always emphasize that final sound. Well, you know, we're, our, our speech is stopping at the end of that word, and so we, we, uh, we don't stress that sound like we should. So what you want to do when you practice that, and you're going to overemphasize the D sound on card. Card. And if you practice it that way, it will feel awkward. It won't feel comfortable or natural. But when you use it in conversation, you won't stress it as much. Okay? And so what I want you to do when you practice that sound is I want you to say car. And then I want you to say card. Car. Car. Card. And make a hard D sound at the end. Uh, and as you practice it that way, you will get better to where it will eventually uh, uh, be uh, how you say it and it'll be natural. Uh, and it, it doesn't feel, I should have told you this earlier, when you're practicing pronunciation, be prepared because it doesn't always feel natural the way we practice it. But then when we use it in conversation, it will come out natural. The other thing is I've had students say, oh, teacher, I feel kind of silly making my mouth shape like that or positioning my tongue like that. That's okay. Just feel a little silly when you're practicing because it will pay you big dividends, big T. rewards whenever you're saying the words. I have a little problem with the TH sound. Ah, very good. Let's see. Let me quickly take a... All right, Fernando, very good. Let's talk about that. Um, and, and you also put a word on the screen I, I don't want to forget about either. I want to talk about too. But uh, the first one let's talk about is TH. And so when we make TH, the biggest reason people have a problem with TH is they don't have their mouth positioned properly. The way you position your mouth for TH is your tongue is sticking out. And your bottom teeth and your top teeth are touching your tongue. Now, this is one that my students usually say, oh, teacher, I don't feel natural. I'm not comfortable do it, sticking my tongue out. Well, you have to because that's how you make the TH sound. Mm -hmm. So you start with your tongue literally sticking out. <coughs> you guys got a little bit of a cough today. <clears throat> you start with your tongue sticking out and just a little bit but your top teeth and your bottom teeth are touching your tongue. And then it's, there's two different sounds in TH. And the first one is what we call a voiced sound. And it comes from the throat, meaning your vocal cords should vibrate. That. This. That. This. 
Yes. Let's talk about the next sound, and you're hitting on that one, Amp. Let's talk about the next sound, and let me find it in my uh, manual here so we can actually give you some examples. The next sound... Uh, okay. For some reason, I'm not coming up with the pages. Um, all right, let's just. Uh, the, the main thing is knowing that the tongue sticks out of the mouth, uh, and we have two different related sounds in TH. One is called voiced, meaning your vocal cords vibrate, and the other one is not unvoiced. Okay, or not voiced, and it just means that your vocal cords don't vibrate. It all comes from the mouth. Okay, so that, this, theirs, okay. the, 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 and so the th really important. Uh, the real, the 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 real importance is again sticking your tongue through out of your mouth through your teeth, your bottom teeth touching it, your top teeth. Now, as you practice this sound, you're going to feel a little awkward. It doesn't feel natural to be sticking your tongue out. The other thing is you sound when other at the beginning. Okay? So, uh, if it's at the beginning of the word, it's sometimes easier. But think about words that have it not at the beginning. Okay, month. Months. 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 Tooth. 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 Here's one with it in the middle. Uh, wither. 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 All right. Wither. So you'll find it more difficult usually if the sound is in the middle or at the Can end. You? Yeah, Liliana gives a great example. Although. 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 Aldo. 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 It's, it's like a D when you say Aldo. It's yes. Like well, and now, you know, and you're hitting on something there, Liliana. When I hear students do that, it's usually because uh, uh, what I call modeling, <clears throat> but it, it, what I mean is you're usually, you somewhere in your past, you have talked with somebody or listen to somebody that said it with a D sound uh -huh. because it is common for certain uh, accents and certain regions of the country uh, it almost is uh, how it's said uh, is with a D sound although uh, but but although. I'm voiceless no voiceless sounds yes yes voiceless, uh, voiceless yes uh -huh. yep very good and so one of the things as you're studying pronunciation, you're going to, to want to be familiar with the different terms. Uh, for example, voiceless and voiced. Uh, voiceless just means that um, it's uh, uh, not your, if it's voiceless, your vocal cords aren't vibrating. If it's voiced, your vocal cords are vibrating. Okay? Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. And I just was getting ready to go through and have some of the new people in the class introduce themselves, and I see a couple people uh, dropped out. So I, 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 I regret that I didn't get them introduced before they left. Uh, but let me, there's one more thing Fernando uh, had a question about uh, that I want to address. Let me go back up here. Ah, pig and big. It wasn't Fernando, I apologize. Yeah, so the P and the B. Uh, very, very good question. Um, I'm going to put a couple up here. Uh, P and B. 
often get confused. Even as the speaker, if you understand the difference, the listener will hear the, the, the wrong sound. And I'll tell you the number one reason, and I need to get a piece of paper to demonstrate this. All right. When we make the P sound, we should have a very strong puff of air coming out. Very strong. And that's how people hear the difference between P and B. Okay? And so when we make the P sound, it's, and watch this paper that I put in front of my mouth. Watch how strong the air is. Pa, pa, pa. Okay? If, that guy's close. Yeah, and if you don't have that strong of a puff of air coming out, people will often confuse your P for a B. So when you're speaking to people, if they get confused between the P and B, it's probably because you're not using that puff of air. And, and as Amp said, it's almost an explosion of air. And that's why I like to use that piece of paper. And I encourage you, do the same. Hold a piece of paper about four inches from your mouth. Puh, puh, pig, police. And hold it in front of your mouth as you say the words. Now, let's look at the same words, okay? So, for example, I'm going to say pig, and then I'm going to say big. And when I say pig, I want you to watch the paper, and then when I say big, I want you to watch, okay? Pig, big, pig, big, pig, big. Big, Very good. The paper should move on the P sound very strongly. But the paper should hardly move when you make the B sound. A very strong puff of air, and Amp put it very well when she said almost an explosion. That helps people hear the difference between your P and your B. Very good. We've had a lot of new people jump in the class. Before I do any more, let me go back and have some people introduce themselves because we lost a couple students that I wanted to have introduced, and uh, I don't want to have that happen again. So let me uh, have you introduce yourself. Macon, can you introduce yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. You have a microphone issue, right? Macon, do you, do you have your microphone fixed? All right. Maybe not. Uh, Lewis, can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Hi, Lewis. All right. Liliana, will you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Okay. I'm Liliana from Colombia. Um, um, what else? Um, um, I'm, uh, I'm uh, happy to uh, take courses in Colingo because I noticed that I improved my English skills as well as my spoken. So Very good. Uh, it really motivated me to continue uh, studying here. Good. Yeah, and it's very convenient too, right? Just plug in the computer and, and, and yeah. go. You don't have to go to and class somewhere. Yeah, and it's free. That's the best part of all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fernando, and, and welcome to class, Ileana. Hi, thank you. Okay. Fernando, can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Hi. I'm from Brazil, Paraíba. All right, very good. Welcome to our class. And Bruno, can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? All right, Bruno, uh, maybe no maybe no audio. All right. And can you introduce yourself? I'm Anne. I'm from El Salvador. All right. Welcome. Welcome. And Amp, can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Hello. I am Pardo from Ecuador. All right. Very good. And, and what, what did you say your name was? Paro. Paro? All right. Um, very Paro. good. Ah, so I keep calling you Amp, and your, Amp's, your name's not Amp, right? All right. Yeah, it's short. All right, very good. Sure thank way. you. All right, thank you. And Amadou, can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Hi, everyone. My name is Amadeu. I'm from Brazil, living in Parana, Parana. All right. 
<laughs> Hello. Bru Hello. Hi, Bruno. Welcome in. I just sent you a chat message. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us where you're from. Uh, I'm, I'm Bruno. I'm from Brazil, too. And I live in Goiânia. Ah, very good. Very good. Not of Brazil. Hel <laughs> Hello, Bruno. Hello. I'm Michael. I'm from Brazil. I live in Catalão, Goiás. He's gone. Very good. Welcome to class. And, and make it, I, I see your, your microphone's okay now. All right. Welcome, welcome to class, everyone. Uh, good to have you here. And uh, uh, if you see that your microphone's not working, um, I've tried to watch and make sure that you're not muted on the chat. Uh, but if you see that it's not working, check the settings on your computer because it can be muted either on the Hangout or it can be muted on your computer. Um, very good. All right. All right. What about any other sounds? Any other sounds that you're having trouble with you'd like to talk about? When, for example, when you don't pronounce a, a vowel in the word, in, in the word, like, for example, castle, muscle, uh, there are a lot of, of words that you don't pronounce that, for example, is an L mute. Okay. Walk, for example, you don't pronounce the L. Walk, castle. And of castle, but you don't pronounce the muscle. Okay. Yes, like this word, muscle. All right, very muscle. good. Yeah, and those are, uh, it's interesting because um, those are usually situations uh, where the, the, the pronunciation issue comes from not, not that you're saying it wrong or that you can't make the sound but you just need more exposure to those words to know uh, when to uh, uh, the, the sound would be silent in a word. Uh, for example, uh, uh, wrong, uh, obviously the, the W is silent there. Uh, the other ones that I, I see that give people issues, uh, similar issues, is the difference between live and live. And some of these words, the only way to really know uh, is from exposure, hearing the words, practicing the words, and then also for things like live and live, looking at the context. How is the word being used in a sentence? Let me give you an example. This time, how's it pronounced? The closer was... Live. Live. Uh -huh. Yeah, very good. All right. So live. The concert was live. And you knew it was live because of the context, what was being said. What about this one? I live. Yeah, I live. So in this case, I live in Cebu. Okay. What about leave like this? Uh, I type in the chat. Ah, all right. Yes, leave. I live in Cebu and live to leave the room. Long sound. Okay. Long sound. Yes. Yes. Uh, it, it is absolutely uh, the long sound. And so in that particular case, uh, it is uh, uh, leave. So it's the long E sound. Okay. I right. leave the room. All right. Okay. Gary, I, I have a question. Sure. Uh, for example, sometimes in English the H is mute and sometimes it, it sounds like a, for example, hot. And in in honest, in, in hot, you pronounce like, like and in yeah. honest, it's mute. Why, how, how do we know when uh, I have to pronounce H or we don't? Yeah, and these are, again, good examples uh, of just getting uh, uh, good exposure and practice. 
Uh, the more that you speak English with native speakers and listen, uh, the more uh, newscasts like CNN news clips uh, or uh, movies uh, uh, that you'll continue to pick up more and more of these words. And there really isn't. <coughs> Excuse me again. There is not a rule that I can give you to help you with those sounds. It's just exposure, studying and practicing and speaking more. Um, and it's kind of like Fernando puts on here, peace and peace. Okay. Obviously, if you see these written, you know the difference. Now, they're pronounced the same. If they're spoken, we're back to the only way we know which it is, is context. Okay. Uh, and so if it's written down you can tell the difference between a piece of cake and uh, she finally found peace. Is the, um, the pronunciation is the same in yes. these two words? Yes, the, those two words of pronunciation is exactly the same. So we have some words like that that can be a little tricky uh, and again context uh, that the word is being used in both spoken and written are very important to help you uh, with these types of words. The other one, and I had a young student say to me, teacher, how do I know the difference between, um, get my hand up here where you can see it, how do I know the difference between watch and watch, okay? Uh, and when I have a student ask those questions, I get very happy because their, their English skills are moving out of the beginner level and into more of the intermediate. Because when you're beginning, you got so many questions, you're not too concerned about those fine details. But as you start to get more comfortable with your English and your skills start to grow, this is when you start to ask these types of questions. Okay. And so, uh, the difference between watch and watch is in the context. The, the pronunciation watch. and the spelling are exactly the same. Watch, like with T and with S, S H D. Like uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Can you type uh, both? Yep. Watch uh -huh. and watch. Uh, okay. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the one is the watch on your wrist. And the other means you're looking, okay? Looking. You're, uh -huh. yeah. all right. But as he said, this young student, uh, you know, how can I tell the difference? Uh, it's all in the context. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and Bruno says, hey, those are the same word. Yeah, they're the same word, but they can have two definitely different meanings. Two different. Uh, yep. One is a verb. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And one is uh, a noun. Oh. Yep, exactly. And Fernando put something on the screen here, men and man. That one um, I don't see as many problems with as I do woman and women. Okay. Women. Uh, yes. So, so what happens when we have the singular version, woman, uh, when that goes to the plural version, the only part that changes is the A becomes an E in the second syllable. However, the pronunciation of the first syllable changes. It's woman, and then it's women. 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 Yep, very good, very good. So, so when we have plural, not only does the second syllable change spelling, but the first and the second syllable change pronunciation. It's no longer woman, now it's women. So the first syllable sounds different even though the spelling difference is only taking place in the second syllable. Uh -huh. <coughs> and Bruno says we're not making sense now. <laughs> I understand Bruno, I understand. Uh, but